Yeah, hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. We are out of here. And we're gonna go bleep, 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 cursor. Okay. <laughs> it's kinda weird how the like trend that transition is over there. So here we are, GR Castle. We already have one coin oh you can't actually check the coin. <laughs> you can't actually check the coin, but we have one coin in place. We need the GR colorless coin. Remember, we can't put it in ourselves, but we have the GR colorless coin. Please give it to me. Do I really have to give up my Snorlax coin? No, it's a copy, I guess. <laughs> you may not enter if you go drop pres present the GR colorless coin to me. Alright, yeah, yeah. This is indeed the required coin. Yay! Hyper you placed your GR colorless coin inside the door's recess. Since you have collected both coins, the doors have opened at last. Oh, jeez! De defeated! I was so thoroughly defeated. Oh, I uh, mean, gosh, the players in here are indescribably strong. I couldn't do a thing, even after all my work to get here. But Mint, you, your deck might do the trick. This is the end. Show everyone your power. If you can't defeat me, though, <laughs> of course, you won't stand the chance in there. Come on, we'll play with our usual six prize card rules. If you win, I'll give you a rare super energy retrieval card. Wait, I got one of those. Oh, it's okay, I'll get another copy. <laughs> Ronald's Suggic Deck. And we shall see what we can do with our deck of... Wow. <laughs> A deck of water energy. <laughs> Let's put it that way, I guess. Uh, yeah. Alright, so... Let's focus on that Articuno and energy removal stuff in the future. That's a lot of energy. <laughs> the opening hand. Alright, so he's trading to get that Dark Dragonite. I'm gonna be fetching cards, though. Just wants to kind of set things up for the future, and I could use a bait- ooh. Oh yeah, that's right, I got this- these still in that- well, that's fine. I got- got a backup, <laughs> if need be. And we're done, yeah, Articuno requires three energy cards, so... Yeah, I'll use energy removal depending on where he puts the next energy- Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, I figured that he wouldn't be powering up Kangaskhan so much as he was something on the bench. You know, using that as a- Drawer as well as a staller. The Kangaskhan here. Alright, there we go. So now, we'll plop that on there and we shall freeze dry. Happy days, no draw for you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I was mainly hoping for was to power him up before he maybe, I don't know, double colorless energies Articuno to death or something. <laughs> Before I can get some actual, real deal, basic Pokemon. Oh, come on! <laughs> um... I'll, I guess I'll set that up, but I'm not gonna use Blizzard, because I might knock out my own mysterious fossil. And I might need that as a backup. So... Yeah, and also it's, you know, it's 50 damage instead of, you know, it's not gonna knock out Kangaskhan in a turn anyway, so... And uh, he's, he's really powering up his forces here. <laughs> I wonder if I should bother attacking with the... Uh, hmm... Well, you know, attacking with... At all, because he's, he's not going to switch out Kangaskhan with... Unless he does, and then I'm, I'm doomed. I just... <laughs> yeah, maybe I won't attack. Because he's kind of in a, in a spot himself, so... Yeah, man, he is just... Man, he is just... this could, uh... Yeah, this could possibly cause me ire with my Articuno. Because it could, it could potentially pop it back to my hand, but it failed, okay. But I was, you know, I was gonna pop it in, play next turn, and power up in three turns anyway, but... Alright, we're still good then. So yeah, the Power of Darkness Gengar here can be quite an offset card there, and that it kind of could potentially set you back. I mean, it does return everything to your hand, so you can always put it back into play, but it's a thing of a it's loss of turns more than anything. And that Psy Horror also could be an issue, but we'll uh, focus on that in the future. And for <laughs> now, let's just kind of just kind of stall a little bit here. And oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. He's got another... <laughs> So you could pop 
Oh yeah, there we go. So you could possibly pop something back to my hand. Uh, I think I'll wait again, because I want to kind of... Yeah, I just want to kind of power up even the Mysterious Fossil if I can for a possible Ammonite's Pokémon power of increased attack power, so to speak. <laughs> Perhaps, maybe, we'll see. Uh, CL, that's pretty nice too, but here we go, let's plop, plop that on, and you know what? I will, no, probably will, I'm not gonna settle on Professor Oak that long again, I'm, not, I'm trying to learn my lesson not to do that. Okay, there's the Ammonite. So yeah, with this, all damage done by Pokemon evolved from Mysterious Fossil, so if I'm attacking with it, I could potentially do more damage with that critter, and also other critters, of course. Um... Uh, Hey, what's with those symbols next to the Dark Dragonairs? That's... what? Is that... that... that show before in other parts? I don't remember that. I don't think it did. It's like a... 99, but it's obviously not. It's like... I think it's some sort of kanji symbol. Or kanji symbol, excuse me. But yeah, uh... Anyway! <laughs> I, oh yeah, that's right. Um... Well... I should probably super energy removal that Gengar. <laughs> Since they're in much more decent shape anyway, and also get that into play. And now, I think we should begin our offense. So yeah, I, I, I just kind of did not want the Gengar to actually attack attack. Yeah, that's what I figured. Because the possibility of going to sleepy sleep, and that could be a problem problem, so... Yeah, I don't think he's going to actually power it up because I've got him in a position where I can knock him out in two turns. So, yeah. Alright. I'll go for the seal. I don't... yeah. And I think I'm gonna go for the freeze-dry first before I go for the blizzard, because the blizzard could damage my own critters. In fact, I, maybe I won't blizzard at all unless I have to, because the, uh... Gengar doesn't look like it's going to be powered up anytime soon, so I could probably be safe with that. And I think I also know what I'm going to do here, assuming I have one in my deck, which I bet I do. Hello there, Wigglytuff! <laughs> and I already, yeah. So yeah, I'll just do another freeze dry. And call it a turn, because I don't see that Gengar attacking, so he might do a switch. Eh, I don't know. I've got other critters waiting in the wings anyway. Like said, a Wiggly, and freeze dry for another prize card. Oh yeah! Mm, I could have made another Dragonair with that, but I put it back in the deck. Maybe I can get another one later. Uh huh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Uh. Which one is he gonna choose? I'll get my Articuno. Yep. So I gotta switch to something. How about Seal? I mean, yeah, he can knock out Seal in two turns, but you know, it's a thing of that. I can possibly just switch it out with something else. Uh, preferably my Dragonair. <laughs> It's like it's their energy removal. Oh, really? I was really expecting you to. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's a one retreat cost. Go in the Dragonair. Plop that on there. And now let's do a little Hyper Beam. <laughs> and that is the power of the Hyper Beam in this game. It doesn't stall you a turn, it stalls the opponent a turn. <laughs> yeah, like. Trading card game moves are quite a bit different than the actual game game moves, you know, like the regular main series game moves. Uh, I should probably go for the Wiggly next. And if you're gonna be trying to power up that Kengar, I'm gonna keep on uh, Hyper Beaming that. <laughs> See what I mean about the Dragonair? Yeah, that's why it's a powerful little critter. I'd say even more powerful than the Dragonites in here. I mean, yeah, they have the. Uh, you know, you can get basic Pokemon with that one, or maybe do a lot of damage, but can it remove energy cards? No. <laughs> I should also probably plop that on the bench, too. 
Uh, I'll just do another Hyper Beam. Slam probably will knock, knock it out, because it's two coins, uh, 30 damage times the number ahead, so it's going to average 30 anyway, so I might as well just keep sucking out that energy. And... Hmm. I don't know why it's showing that symbol anyway, because I don't remember that being there before. Alright, let's go and power up the Articuno again. And... Yeah, I think we are good to go. I'll use a Hyper Beam again because it's guaranteed damage while the coin flips are potentially zero. Even though it's probably going to give me... Ooh, hello. <laughs> even though it's probably going to give me a... Uh, Result of 30, but you know, don't want to risk it. Just want to keep collecting prize cards. Best of win. Okay, I can, I can live with that. Even <laughs> for the Ammonite of all things. Like, is that, is that really your biggest threat? <laughs> all right, you, you could do that, I suppose. And Dragonair is going back out. So now, oh, with that energy removal, that's especially nice. But I was gonna say, but now. I'm gonna lock down his tail from doing anything anymore with the hyper beams while I power up other stuff. <laughs> because it takes two turns to power up the Dragonite unless it's got a double colorless energy. And then I'm just gonna discard that anyway with the hyper beam, so. Yeah, um. Good luck with this, Ronald. <laughs> and yeah, I keep powering up the Articuno again and hyper beam. <laughs> So as, as you see, that, that 20 damage, it, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be much for 4 energy, but it's that, it's that energy removal effect that's gonna be killer for the opponent. Um, no Lapras, I guess, now. I don't see myself needing the Blizzard anytime soon, so I'll just go ahead, continue the Hyper Beam Decimation. <laughs> Oh, ooh, double colorless, indeed. Um, uh, energy removal. <laughs> well, <laughs> so much for that. Yeah, I, I'm, now my deck is, you know, it's begun its phase of death, so it's kind of, it's kind of over at this point, I would say, unless he has some sort of ace in the hole or something. It is Kangaskhan? I don't know about that, being an ace in the hole. But he's just, maybe he's just going to fetch some cards. He might just run himself out of cards doing that, though, by the time I... Oh, you know, if I keep hyper-beaming him... I was thinking of slamming him for more damage quicker, but if I keep hyper-beaming him, he might not actually be able to draw cards, and I could keep sapping energy out of him. Uh, should I, though? Probably. Because that'll kind of kind of put him in a spot of less and less energy. Is the hunter got an energy? You got no energy left, I see. So I will use Bill to bolster probably my energy. Wow. Bolster my energy reserves. Boop. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go for Dugong, I guess. And let's go for the slam this time if he's not gonna have any more energy. And wow, very nice. That's not enough to knock out because I didn't slam initially and it starts with 90 HP, but yeah. Alright, so you just, you just go for the wow, the hyper beam next. Do I, should I even use Professor Oak? I mean, I'm, I'll run myself low on cards, possibly, so. And I'm in pretty good position at this moment in time, so I think I'm gonna be good just kind of flip flopping through this with my current roster. Uh, okay, can you do anything? No, I didn't think so, because I think that's a 3 energy cost. Yeah, Tail Strike. Uh, uh, and you could Evolutionary Light. That's not going to do that much, but you could. Um, I don't know if I want to fill up my bench with anything. Should I just go for the win with the Slam? Like, maybe I can get two heads out of this one. Nope. <laughs> I mean, you might have a double color list, but I would doubt that. Especially since I've been energy removaling everything. And, oh, okay, he's switching. That kind of makes more sense. And seal. Sure, sure. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> how about that? This is kind of speed things along, because you know, you know how this is gonna end anyway. <laughs> Based on what I've got. There we go. 
Uh, oh, and yes, like all the Ronald fights, you want to save beforehand, but uh, that's all he's implied. I must admit, Mint, you're very strong. Anyway, here's your new Super Energy Retrieval card. Two copies, though! Ooh, I'm always happy to get a promotional card anyway! Yeah! <laughs> I'm sure you can beat these guys. Just gotta do your best. Anyway, fight on, Mint. I will. I will. Please enter the castle. Please enter the castle. <laughs> Alright. So this is it. At the big time end game, boys. There they are. The final three. And Lucini says, So you have finally arrived. I'm impressed, Mint. You have to collect the legendary cards first before I recognize you. It's not endgame yet! Yeah, I knew this was coming. But prove yourself by collecting those cards and putting them in your deck. I know you'll believe that you know what direction is best for Team GR, but I'll never agree with you. My ideals are immaculate. Well, maybe he'll be able to change his mind later. I'll fight you myself if I have to. Executive Clay. Ha! Executive Allison. Yes, King Villacidi. She's got a heck of a deck, by the way. <laughs> just, just, well, you'll see. Mint, you must fight my two executives first. Only if victory is against both will I confront you in combat. If, that is, you can win. And he leaves. I'm your first opponent. They call me Executive Clay. But let us not fight here. Head over to the duel table. He's in a have a, the requirement. Now that we're here, let's start the battle. I have special requirements for a duel that you must uphold. I've heard so much praise about the Pokemon cards of Legend. You undoubtedly heard about them. They are the following four cards. Moltres, Articuno, Zapdos, and Dragonite of the lowest levels. They're basically the legendary cards of the Grand Masters. Put all four of these cards of Legend into a single deck. If you do that, I'll be, I would be more than happy to have a duel with you. Yes. Don't play around, man. Do you take me for a fool? Don't pretend that you don't know where the Pokemon cards of Legend are. If you don't have them, then the Grand Masters must still have them. Collect the Pokemon cards of Legend. If you don't, I won't duel you. You cannot challenge me yet. You must defeat Clay first. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. This is how you left to do it. Do it to my terms of fighting you. I've already done so. Rest our fight at me. No. <laughs> you don't have the Pokemon cards of Legend. And all you have to strike some sort of deal with the Grand Masters. Okay, so if you guys are just hanging out here, maybe I'll just kind of. Sneak up! Oh, I thought I could battle your boss. Never mind. You cannot go on until you have defeated the both of us, man, man. You guys, no, nothing gets past you. So I'm gonna go over to Ishihara's house. Yeah, Ishihara's house. He's got a whole other place here. And you know what? Oh, I should also um, really quick, <laughs> just really quick, because I I don't want the fossils. I'm not making a fossil deck or anything here. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll keep it as a regular water deck or something like that. But for now, let's go ahead and clean this stuff up for the future so that you know what the poop I am doing. <laughs> um, wait, wait, did I pass the mysterious... How did I pass the mysterious fossils? I just, yeah, I was, must have been focused on other things. Alright, so I guess I'll stick with the water theme. I just need seven of some critter, so I'm thinking we're gonna go... Uh, yeah, maybe we'll go with that star you, that star me, say yes, no. <laughs> Alright, so as you can see, there's a table going on in here. Does that mean something? Perhaps. Anyway, let's go inside. Hmm. Hmm. And card pop is the only way you can acquire certain cards. Two such cards are Venusaur level 64 and Mew level 15. I'm gonna have to game shark those in, because I don't know how I could possibly card pop on uh, an emulator. But <laughs> normally I would card pop. There are rumors that there are two other cards only gotten this way. Currently, no one has reported seeing them. I wonder what they are. They're aptly named Fandom Cards. Mr. Ishihara. Dun 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 dun. Team GR is infamous for their adoration of Dark Evolution cards. Dark Evolution cards have some powerful attacks and Pokemon powers. They usually have less HP than standard evolutions, however. That's what I've been mentioning along the way. Um, it's possible to use many Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon in one deck. To support them all, use 4 Eevee and 4 Ditto level 19 cards. Ditto's transform attack makes it a very versatile Pokemon. It increases the potential number of Eevee cards in the deck to 8s. But it's kind of randomized, so maybe not that... 
that good of potential. <laughs> GR King Villasini is set to possess a special card. That card is none other than the GR's Mewtwo card! It has a Dark Wave Pokémon power and Dark Amplification attack. It is unknown what kind of abilities it has, but it must be a powerful card. Ooh. There are five special energy cards in addition to the six basic types. Double Colorless Energy and Rainbow Energy are examples. There are also Potion, Full Heal, and Recycle Energy. Each has its use. These cards have a limit of four per deck, however, unlike Basic Energy. Think carefully about balance when choosing your energy cards. Unless you have all colorless Pokémon, then whatever. <laughs> You can collect up to 24 coins total. Ooh! You'll find many by battling the leaders of clubs or fortresses. There are also a couple in the game center and at challenge cups. One especially tough one to get is held by the GR King. Dun 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 dun! Try to collect them all and change your coin every now and then. Speaking of. Psyduck time! Sure, why not? <laughs> it's been a while since I changed a coin. I should have changed at the beginning of the part. Alright, so. We need another singular battler somewhere around here, and while we could go directly over to the Pokemon Dome, I'd rather not right now, because it kind of kind of forces you into a multitude of battles back to back to back. So what I'm gonna do here is go back over to the Psychic Club because Marais got a new deck, and <laughs> I still love him when he says that. And uh, go ahead and give him a battle at the Leading Tower of Pisa here. Dun, 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 dun. No more GR symbol, by the way, over the uh, uh, Psychic Eye, so they clean up everything. But anyway, <laughs> do you wish to take out my deck focused around Psychic types? Nope. You don't want to fight? In that case, I'll save up my Psychic Power for our next meeting. Yes, battles against me are always a full six prize cards. Let's begin this psychic battle! The Ultra Elite deck is a go-go! And oh no, oh no, it's new. Nah, it's not that difficult really per se, it's just I gotta, I gotta clear out the last psychic club member, you know? You know? <laughs> so I figured this would be a good time to do so. I should probably begin the slapping. Set up the Jiggly-ing, and probably Professor Oak immediately at the start of my turn. Well, aside from attaching the energy first, because, you know, you know, it's, it's kind of kind of important in general. So. And no trainer cards, so I guess I can't do that Professor Oak after all. Alas, ooh, I was going to, I'm not going to do that anyway. I got, I got a Wiggly to play next turn. But for now, let's slap that Ghastly into submission. And Bill for two, he does for me and you, but actually it's all just for him, so. So I, I don't know why I said me and you, it just sounded good. And no, no trainers, ooh, um. So yeah, we're gonna go do that. And when he's inevitably not able to use that attack, I will be able to Professor Oak and also plop Dugong on that seal as well, but you know, one thing at a time here. So yeah, he's gonna be side shocking now, and the head flips like lick a tongue begins. <laughs> no, it's, it couldn't possibly be bad. As the lick a tongue is impossible. <laughs> Alright, so let's dump out the stuff. You know what, as a matter of fact, I'm not gonna be attacking with that anyway. I'll set that up in case of another dugong and for the wiggly. And I'll see what else I get in my hand. Go. It's a nice bill, Pokemon Trader as well. Ooh. I'll probably trade Seal for something, because since I got another Seal there and another uh, Dugong to boot. What should I get though? I'm thinking I will trade for a Dragonair. <laughs> well, eventually. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a Dragonair. And we're done. Alright, did the energy attachment, Mr. Mime's invisible wall could be an issue. We shall see. Wait. Wait, you use energy retrieval for one energy? Why? <laughs> okay, that's not using the card to its fullest. Oh, maybe because you wanted the Professor Oak, but still, you're gonna you're gonna have another energy card to discard later anyway, aren't you? In theory? But you still... You 
use Professor Oak and would would have disca never mind. <laughs> Alright, par <laughs> paralysis once again is a factor, of course. Of course. Got a lot of water energy though. And I know how to use it. It looks like my opening hand in the last game. And Ghastly Psy Shocker not this time. I wonder if I should recover. Like as a sneaky move. Hmm. I, think I might just do that. <laughs> Set him back three turns. I can get Star Freeze powered up potentially. I don't know, we'll see. I could also could have also switched and then just kind of wiped the Abra in general, but I'm not really too concerned about the Abra in general. I mean, yeah, it could have unlimited head coin flips like a Lickitung, but you know, when, once the Wiggly is in, the <laughs> The... there's a pretty big problem going on, you know? Okay, there's a Dragonair. That's another big problem for him. Uh, maybe I should go for that. <laughs> Look, like instead of powering up Staryu into doing Star Freeze, I could just instead switch into something more devastating. And... Tails this time! So that means a switch could be in order. Wait, actually, isn't it two? No, it's one retreat cost. Okay, that's that's uh, it's pretty interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I also got a build though. Erdikuno seal, definitely plopping that Erdikuno out there. And the wave. But up the full power victory is coming. Oh, oh, actually, that might be an issue. Uh, the. Mr. Mime has invisible wall, so I can only do up 20 damage to it unless I cause a sleep confuse or a par paralysis to it. And chances are that will not really be <laughs> working out that well. <laughs> um, wait, how did you do. Wait, medit. Oh, that's right, you have this Mr. Mime for neutral damage. I was gonna say, how did you do damage to Wigglytuff? Yeah, neutral damage, Mr. Mime prevents the uh, resistance of Wigglytuff. But anyway, um, I want to do 20 damage, but I also don't want to switch. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to Lullaby, and we'll just kind of hold off for now. And I was going to say, ah, maybe. Maybe we'll be able to keep it at napping. Nope, nope. If it stays asleep for two turns, I mean, uh, like two between turns, which is a very low chance, 25%, I'll be able to actually be a, uh, be KOing that Mr. Mime in one shot, because I'll be disabling its Pokemon power. So, yeah. You know, I probably should save the Wiggly, though. And I'll let you go after Starmie. And just kind of use it as my shield, I suppose. Yeah, I'm a lot of... Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of kind of stuck at the moment until I get Dragonair all hyper beaming. <laughs> so you can go ahead and meditate for 30, and that'll give me another turn to get an energy on you, and then we are done. So you go ahead and knock out Star Me if you want to. I'm gonna be hyper beaming you into Doom, so. Yeah, and if need be, I've got the Wigglytuff at 50 HP as backup. So yeah, that should be game then, probably. <laughs> Assuming things go decently. I mean, he's got he's got the potential for uh, a bunch of powering up of things, but give another dugong in play. And here we go. Prepare for the suckage. <laughs> and yeah, now he's in, in the spot of... He can only do 10 damage to Dragon. Okay, I was gonna say he can only do 10 damage to... Uh, I don't have really... <laughs> yeah! Um, I don't have trainer cards, so... Nope! <laughs> maybe I'll get one on the next turn, but I could just play it if I want. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't play it. <laughs> I could get a bunch of trainer cards from that, like, immediately. So instead, let's try and keep the Haunter down, and just let it do 10 damage to Dragonair if it really wants to. Or if he really wants to, I should say, not if it. <laughs> uh-huh. 10 damage. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> I may get another trainer card, but it wouldn't be as many as I'd probably get if I got Professor Oak. Ooh. Um. I think I want to use that on one of the bench critters. I'll discard that. And I think I'll go for the Ghastly in case of another Haunter. And. Yeah, Hyper Beam. <laughs> Just gotta spam this until we have victory again, I suppose. <laughs> You've seen the power of Hyper Beam? And now you can live it all over again! <laughs> yeah, eventually I'll drop them down to zero energy cards, and that's gonna be... gonna be a thing. <laughs> so he, he might, uh... He might be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't even give an energy to Haunter if, uh... I'm gonna be doing such little damage, or maybe he, does, he just ran out of energy. Uh, wait, why do I keep checking my hand when I know what I got anyway? Anyway. <laughs> Upper beam! There we go! And now! What you gonna do? Oh, that might not be a good idea. Because <laughs> the neutral damage, Mr. Mind, when I knock that out, that's, uh. You're gonna lose your ability to hit my Wigglytuff. Just saying. Anyway, let's see how many heads a juggling can get. It'll probably do 20. That would be the average. But we shall see. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> that's actually. Um, I was just thinking. Don't. Why does that? Why did that do? Did, like, didn't? Hmm. I don't. Did he? I thought I got one heads. So was I not paying attention? Anyway, I'm gonna suck that last energy card. <laughs> I just had to think about that for a second because I was like, why is it showing as resistance when neutral damage is supposedly in play? Oh wait! Oh no no wait! Isn't it when it's your bench Pokemon? Oh, that's why. Yeah. Let's see that. Uh, power can't be used if Mr. Mime is your active Pokemon. Yep. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. I was thinking, like, what the? <laughs> so he was just going for four head flips, just to try and do some sort of damage to uh, uh, Dragonair here, but... Mm, mm. I wonder if I should Professor Oak now, since I'm kind of... I mean, I, I should definitely do this. Like, I got, I got a whole army of death on my side, but... <laughs> I wonder if I should make another Wigglytuff or something. Yeah, I'll think about it. I'll just go for a slam because I just need one heads. There we go. Figured I could possibly knock out Mr. Mime in one earlier turn. Energy removal. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, so yeah, he's putting the Haunter, so I guess that could possibly do a lot more damage in the long run if I get more trainer cards, but I just I just pulled that energy removal and I'm just going to play it anyway. But yeah, that uh, neutral damage is gone too, so... That might be a bit of an issue. <laughs> That's why I said it's... Yeah, I wasn't sure that was such a good idea on his part. Guess I'll go for the Articuno. I guess if it's not going to be doing much... I'll see if I can speed this along. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll see if I can speed it along and do at least more than 20 damage. But I did zero! <laughs> That's the risk of using a double coin flipper. Uh... That's a... Let's try it again. Probably get one heads out of it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Maybe I should just use two hyper beams next. Something like that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Alakazam. This damage swap is a thing now. Mm, that could stall out to the end of time. Oh, scoop up. Uh, wait, why didn't you just scoop up the one, like, put all the energy, I mean, put all the damage counters on big HP man down there, and then scoop that up. I think Murray is having some AI issues today. <laughs> anyway, that's not gonna do anything once again. And if this is, if it's, he's gonna be doing that damage swap dealio, it should probably be doing more damage, huh? How many cards for team the deck? Should I wiggly tough then or just or should I just run him out of cards? He's got ten cards left in his deck. Hmm. 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 
I don't want to. I don't want to have less cards in him, so I'm not gonna play the Professor Oak. So I'll just, I'll just do this, just to get rid of the energy in case I get more uh, trainer cards in the future. And yeah. See, why didn't yeah? Why didn't you put it on Chansey instead of I don't know? <laughs> okay, double colorless on the Chansey. Interestingly enough. Uh, I could. I could try and do the 60. At least probably do 30, but yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I could try and do more damage, just the Hyper Beam. Uh, so this is gonna be damage swapping anyway. So it's, yeah, yeah, this is gonna be kind of annoying unless he actually puts out Alakazam, because then I'll actually be able to do something with that. Because I can knock out the Alakazam, and I'm not running with uh, Ener. Um, Gust of Wind in this deck, so... Uh, mm, yeah, I'm not playing that Professor <laughs> I'll just keep slamming, I guess. Uh-huh. Aha! Uh -huh, 60 this time! That's maximum damage, ah. Uh. But that's not what you can expect to happen, ah. Uh. Uh, he's gonna probably start putting him on a Kadabra. Scoop up. Okay, that, that, see that? That move there made a lot more sense. I should put Chansey back in play, and then put the, um, he didn't. I was to say, and then put the damage counters back on, uh, Chansey, but... Okay... Okay... I mean, I, I, because I can knock out... The Haunter now... Let's just go for that. I go for Blizzard. It's it could potentially do damage to my bench critters, but I think I'm in oh I'm in decent shape, but I got heads off that. So that's actually gonna be terribly devastating to him. Cause that does a lot more damage for the whole damage swap dealio going on in play. So Yeah Ooh, Alakazam Ooh Should he be doing that? Maybe not. Maybe not. Well, we'll see. Because I'm going to be freeze-drying now. <laughs> because with the freeze-dry, I can prevent him from using the Pokémon power and then finish it off with the powers of Blizzard. That's... yeah, that's the end of the game right there. So, that, yeah, that was... he made so many mistakes this game. <laughs> I just... It's one of those things that's like, if you're going to flub that many moves, or make huge flubs, or one huge flub, you, you probably deserve to lose the game. I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. <laughs> Just learn from your mistakes, and play better in the next game. <laughs> I even got a head flip off that. And that is victory for me, and the toll clearing of the Psychic Club is done. Could it be that I lost? Yes. Yes, but what a satisfying duel. <laughs> Ambition booster pack oh, we got a duck bio pluma na, 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 na. Yeah, nothing new. And probably nothing new here either. Rocket booster pack. Oh wait. Maybe this bit oh, no no, I did show this before, didn't I? Uh boss's way is always nice to see because of its searching capabilities. It seems you've got a secret power that trumps my psychic abilities. I'm going to focus my mind and power up. So I won't lose to you next time. You do that. You got any new dialogue though? No, uh, wait. Uh, and I said focus on psychic types. Okay, yeah, it's the same dialogue. All right, so with that, I'm gonna end off the part here. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part. Oh, I can't face the camera over here in this like diagonal line. Dang it! I'll have to face this line. I'll see you in the next part when I head over to the Pokemon Dome to tackle the Grand Masters. This is a beautiful looking pillar. <laughs>